Pete says he's responsible, but last year he broke the hall vase. Pete says he loves his parents, but he didn't buy their anniversary card. He just signed it. And for the algebra final, Pete had to borrow notes. Broke the vase, signed the card, borrowed notes. You need someone you can trust with your bowling ball. Give it to Pete. He deserves it. Paid for by the committee to give Pete the bowling ball. The Adventures of Pete and Pete is a live-action show that premiered on Nickelodeon in the early 90s. It was very awesome. No understatement, this show stuck with me for many, many years, just because how it handled mundane issues about growing up in fantastical and surreal ways. This show absolutely holds up today. Pete and Pete doesn't fall into the typical live-action, zany slice-of-a-life show aimed at kids. There's no laugh track, no plastic, evenly lit sets, or any overacting kids and adults mugging for the camera. There aren't any racial or archetypal stereotypes either, and it constantly subverts expectations. The closest spiritual successor to Pete and Pete is probably Malcolm in the Middle. Ned's Declassified School Survival Guide also follows in its footsteps. I hope you give this series a look, as this video is full of spoilers, which might change your impression of the show. Stick around until the end for more overall analysis of the show's style and stories. But first... This is your driver, Stu, with an update on our new onboard regulations. Passengers will refrain from killing my soul! Plus, a few other minor changes. So what are some life lessons we can learn from Pete and Pete? If there's one thing that Pete and Pete taught us, it's that the mundane can be exciting with the right narration. The forces of darkness assembled to destroy Artie once and for all. The evil paper cut sliced a gash into the heart of Pete and Artie's friendship. In fact, it seems like anything can be interesting with the right narration. Big Pete narrates nearly every single episode in the series, breaking the fourth wall by talking directly to the audience. Little stories about getting a bowling ball, pulling a prank, cramming for a test, or staying up after bedtime suddenly get an epic scope of meaningfulness. This lesson can be applied for everyday life. Good narration makes everyday events into adventures that change the course of your life. If only you had your own Big Pete to do voiceover. You know the feeling you get after you hear your favorite song for the first time? All you want to do is play it again and again, so it stays stuck in your head forever. Well, what if you could only hear it once, and that was it? What would you do? Choose weirdness over conformity. So this lesson is huge for most kids growing up before the superhero action movie Nerdy is Cool era. In the 80s and 90s, being quirky or nerdy or even a little bit off was totally uncool and not upheld as unique and desired. Being weird branded you as unlovable, strange, and unlikely to make many friends. But Pete and Pete was all about choosing to be weird and awesome over sticking to the norm. This was a huge breath of fresh air. We finally saw how weird kids have friends who are equally as weird and are still actually happy. Weirdness is also realistically portrayed. I don't care how snug they fit. You're nuts. Guardian angel? Get help. Kids are not just random for random sakes or have cute quirks, and both Little and Big Pete get bullied and embarrassed in front of their peers for being weird. And you know what? They still get to be happy. They get to save the day. They choose to be weird, to do what no one else supports them, and still retain their humor and friends. The show doesn't villainize the norm, but it does show that you can be happy without conforming to popular trends and decisions. And that meant a lot. Don't mess with Artie. The strongest man in the world! Artie is just that amazing mixture of crazy, weird, and powerful that makes the world more fun to be in. He fought an evil bowling ball, a garden hose, and raced the head of cabbage. He is nuts, but he's also selfless and is just the superhero the kids of Wellsville need. Artie breaks every rule in the book, but he's exactly who we need in the right moment. Artie is our inner child, our superhero, our alter ego. He inspires us to have fun and be out there. <laughs> Music of the gods! I'm lying down, George Clinton! By the time Artie began dancing the voodoo crispy, Markle's spell was broken. A hero is only as awesome as their villains. The antagonists of Pete and Pete are so well written, dastardly, and varied that it takes real skill and ingenuity to outmaneuver, outplay, and outwit them. 
What you might have noticed from media is that the heroes become more interesting thanks to their rogues gallery, and that goes double for Pete and Pete. Big Pete has Endless Mike, Mr. Slurm, Lifeguard Mike, his baseball manager, and other boys trying to get close to Ellen. Little Pete has Pit Stain, Principal Schwinger, Paper Cut, and nearly every adult in the series. Even their dad has adversaries. But when facing with an impossible enemy, you have to become even more unpredictable and braver. The lesson learned here is that you should cherish your real life villains, for they force you to live up to your potential and find out what you really stand for. There was no way out. Don't ask for whom the bell tolls, it tolls for you, Wrigley. What is your decision? Little Pete is the master of the crazy zinger that gives your cerebral cortex a one-two punch. You don't need curse words to land an intense burn, you just need imagination. A twisted, twisted imagination. Lick the parquet, Cornwallis! To my late grandpa! Go recycle yourself! Paper cut. Blow it out your nose hole, Frank. Suck chatter, muscle head. Read it and weep. Fungus lick. So wing better, you pus drunks. Burning maggot batter. Johnny Earwax is a hiner. Shut up and throw, drool cup. Cheese log. Fiber licking blowhole. You cheese plug. Fun sucker. Medulla oblongata. Okay, that last one wasn't really that bad. Scrape me sideways, pipsqueak. Not bad. Another surprising life lesson from the show is that your enemies can teach you things. Really, truly important things. You have no idea what fair is, Mr. Wrigley. What's fair is when someone thinks it's worthless to take shop and so he makes worthless things because he has no respect for the wood or what he can do with it. What's fair is for that worthless student to get an F. Now, what's not fair is when something's taken away from you at a very young age before you have the chance to discover its power. Your enemies are like a warped reflection of yourself, or who you could become, or who you used to be. And they give you an opportunity to grow and empathize with people who don't necessarily deserve it. They can help you realize what you don't want to become. Your enemies can teach you things and make you more compassionate towards others in the process. 34, we're not like underpants. We're people. We're not supposed to be perfect. I'm defective. I don't belong here. Yes, you do. How about staying for dinner? Love makes you do crazy things. This is a lesson kids and teens learn over and over again, and it shows up multiple times in the show. Big Pete is the hopeless romantic of the series, constantly dreaming about a different girl. But puppy love can affect us all, and there's even one episode that focuses on spring fever, which makes everyone fall in love and become unable to focus on anything else. Love can make you do crazy things, like call a telephone for 27 years and cause your entire city to go crazy. Love is a powerful force, and it comes in many forms. Some love can destroy you. We will be cruising at a speed of 55 miles an hour, moving swiftly away from the twisted wreckage of my shattered life! Others are a flash in a pan, and some linger on without certainty of the future. Ellen had always been a girl and a friend, but finally I had to know. Was she a girlfriend? The two longest story threads related to love were Big Pete's will they or won't they infatuation with Ellen, and Bus Driver Stu's on and off relationship. Big Pete and Ellen are really close friends and confidants, but they're not mature enough to really take the next step in their relationship and settle for being friends. That doesn't mean Pete doesn't get jealous when someone else is getting close to Ellen or gives her special attention. It's kind of dorky and wonderful to see how much they really need each other, even if they're uncertain if love is where the relationship is going. Stu, on the other hand, is a total victim of love, but it's played up for laughs. Very dark humor laughs. Stu, who's been pretty depressed since his girlfriend left him over nothing, could really use a good shot right about now. Whatever type it might be, love comes out of nowhere and sometimes makes you do crazy things. Real friendships are complex. 
Like a lot of lessons from the show, this is a subtle realization. Real friendships are not simple. There's a lot of complexity that goes in friendships between siblings, parents, friends, and strangers. The strongest friendships can also be the most volatile during adolescence, as illustrated by the relationship between Ellen and Pete. They like each other, but they also fight, get disappointed with one another, and get mixed feelings about what they really want. Big Pete and Little Pete also have this on and off friendship. Sometimes it's the strongest bond, and other times they're mortal enemies, which is actually extremely realistic for siblings. They fight, team up, break the rules, defend each other, and have a lot of love-hate moments. Pete and Pete doesn't shy away from the difficult factors in friendships, and how it takes work to be friends with some people, even changing your own attitude and realizing you weren't the wrong party. But Artie, you're my best friend! I always will be, my little Viking. The next one is a really hard-hitting life lesson. Ask questions that challenge you. This happens a lot in the series, most prominently in the episode X equals Y. Why do we need to know this? It was a question asked by a million miserable students every day. Why do we have to learn all this stuff? Right now, thousands of trees are being cut down in the Amazon rainforest, and ice caps are melting, and I don't know, another shopping mall is going up somewhere. What do word problems have to say about that, Miss Fingerwood? Word problems are so important. Can you name one time in your entire life when solving one actually made a difference? Pete and Pete really focused on how kids should ask not-so-simple introspective questions. Not only is asking questions important to learning the answers, sometimes it's just an exercise to learn personal truths. They say the world is divided into two kinds of people, winners and losers. But how do you know what you are? How do you know if you're destined to go through life with this branded on your forehead, or if you're destined for greater things? Introspective questions can be big or small, but this show really preaches that kids and adults need to question things more often and seek out answers for themselves. Accepting weird truths is fine, but bringing them into question is just as important. Another lesson learned from Pete and Pete is that some truths lead to mixed feelings. You can get something you really wanted, but realize you don't want it anymore. Big Pete and Little Pete spend nearly a month fighting over who gets to keep the lucky bowling ball, only to realize in the end it wasn't worth their friendship. Big Pete is finally on the winning team in baseball, but it's for the wrong reasons, and he's disgusted of what winning has turned his team into. Even adults have mixed feelings. You got the son you always wanted. I just wanted us to get closer. I didn't think it would come to this. Mixed feelings don't always end up in regret either. Sometimes they have the opposite effect. You can realize something you hate is actually not that bad. Big Pete learned this when he started to embrace Halloween again, and Little Pete learned this when he was conquering his fear of dancing. The lesson here is that mixed feelings are real and happen all the time, and are sometimes extremely difficult to untangle. I kind of got lost in, in the future. I know that sounds weird, but... Now I'm back, and all I want to do is go back to when Ellen, I just want to be friends again. Maybe that's what we were supposed to be. It's really cool how Pete and Pete showed how ideas, opinions, and beliefs can change, and you should confront those emotions and new avenues. The last lesson is this. If there's one thing the show did really well, it's create a world that's both familiar and completely surreal. Oh, am I kidding? No one wants to be a bus driver when they could be a bear! It plays a lot of things straight, like crazy things existing and people reacting to them, rather than it being in someone's imagination. It makes every day an adventure, strange and funny. So the last lesson is this, be weird, try something new, sing and dance and go crazy. The world needs more surreal, more weird and more unconditional friendship. But there was only one person who could snap Stu out of it. This show is so heartfelt, charming, weird, and wonderful. It doesn't ham up the stories for more drama, and most of the episodes focus on interesting issues about growing up. There are the typical adolescent tropes of the love triangle, bad guy turning into a friend, evil kids, but it touches on these issues in surreal ways. Some of the issues it covered was trying to be a good friend, rejecting authority, fighting with your family, questioning your goals, getting obsessed over things, being grounded, cramming for a test, heartbreak, death, goodbyes, mistakes, 
winning, acceptance, friendship, luck, and family. Pete and Pete is like catnip for people who love down-to-earth adventures that are spiked with a heap of seriality. I was actually having a great time, and I knew why. For me, there's never been a better friend than my own brother. Another interesting thing the show did is it didn't really address outside media or trending topics. The Adventures of Pete and Pete is a really well self-contained show and I can't recommend it enough. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will leave you now with a bunch of quotes from the show I really enjoyed. Have a nice day! A little closer. I can smell his fear, mommy. <laughs> it smells like bacon. Sometimes I wonder, is there more to life than underpants? I don't want to wear a sock. Don't be sorry. You were just exercising your powers of expression. That's a very desirable trait to employers. I see you're working. When am I not? Law enforcement is full-time work. I misjudge one curb to car and the whole criminal justice system collapses. Ms. Fingerwood lives for math. She named her cat the square root of seven. <laughs> Shrek. 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 They were two words, the two words that give us all hope. Who deserves the celebrated sphere? Item, young Pete toppled the Asian bond market. Item, young Pete's science project caused spontaneous baldness across the Texas panhandle. Item, young Pete accidentally drained Lake Superior. His response? No comment, grunge bag! No comment, grunge bag? Not good enough. Exit question. Who gets the ball? Young Pete? Wrong. Answer. Older Pete. Bye-bye. <laughs>